Hello everyone, this is David, and tonight's episode is Shadows, the sixth episode of the first season of The X-Files. So, this starts off with a pair of muggers attacking this woman that's at an ATM, and there's an... <laughs> something happens, and uh, the agents get called in, for unknown reasons, um, to investigate these two muggers whose bodies are still... That seem to be of crushed from the inside and still maintain a, bo a high body temperature. Uh, when asked about um, when asked about what's going on with this, um, they're not really given much of an explanation by the agent the other two agents. They're given min minimal information at the very least, like it was a six hour flight away and whatnot. Meanwhile, um, there is a funeral going on as Lauren, uh, the girl who was mugged in the opening, um, is talking with her boss about grief over the death of the her, her previous boss, whose apparent suicide from the week before. And Mulder and Scully begin to investigate this further. It turns out there's a terrorist group that called the uh, Isfahan uh, that the men were a part of that mugged her. Um because they go through the ATM footage, and they go to talk with her. Um, she admits to knowing about the, um, to the, uh, knowing about the murders, but not wanting to have anything to do with it. She didn't realize they were murdered. Or she admits to knowing about the mugging. She doesn't admit to knowing about the murders. Um, and the agents kind of leave, uh, and their car goes out, and she's looking at them, and they can find no ev evidence of tampering with it, but there's the car still has a crazy electrical charge. Uh, Mulder posits that there's some sort of psychokinetic activity happening, some form of psychokinesis, and they think that Lauren herself is some sort of latent parapsychic, if you will, or just psychic, for the layman. Further investigation, however, uh, Lauren begins having weird visions and seeing things, and people come to um, attack her at her house. Um... But she manages to survive because a assailant, or because some something helps her and starts just this presence starts fucking them up. Mulder gets to see one of the people fully levitated up in the air before it's thrown across the room, and I believe both of those men, both of the people that attacked her, either die or are critically wounded. And they come to find out that um, that. Um, the boss that, that Lauren worked for, she was closer to than her own parents, and that he, uh, I believe Graves is his name, um, they thought um, might have been killing the people, and that he faked his own death, but they go through all the rigmarole, they do the chest testing, and they find out that it, he was in fact, um, he did in fact die, and uh, it, so he's not like this mysterious thing doing it. And suffice to say, um, they the the other agents that called them in tell them about the Istvan thing and how that company's under investigation for um, selling basically parts to terrorists. And um, they go into uh, they help uh, Lauren helps them with that, and they go in uh, to investigate and search for everything. Lauren gets um, what is it? Lauren gets. Well, before all that happens, Lauren gets interrogated for a good long while, by first by Mulder and Scully, and then by the agents, and then um, she later comes back, tells them about the sales, and tells them that she'll help them. And then when they go to investigate, they can't find anything. And uh, meanwhile, the the current boss, I forget what his name is, um, Dorland, I think, um, he had. He goes to attack Lauren with letter opener, but the spirit, or whatever you want to call it, grabs him, grabs the knife, cuts the wallpaper open after Lauren begs with it not to kill him, and there's a disc behind the wallpaper. And um, that's kind of where it cuts out. Uh, well, th that's where that ends, that story ends, and it cuts to a few weeks later with uh, Lauren starting her new job somewhere, and it seems very similar to her old job. And there's a shaking, much like uh, what happened with Grave Spirit before. 
but it doesn't spill the coffee like it would have. So it, it's up in the air whether or not the spirit followed her, or if it's gone. This episode was okay. It, it had some interesting elements to it, but I think the way they kind of handled it was a little weird. So I'm going to give this one, I, I guess, a 4 out of 10. It's not the best of episodes, but it is a solid episode. A little bit below average, but still, it's okay. Um, definitely, this doesn't have anything to really do with the overarching myth arc, so you can ignore it if you're looking for myth arc episodes. And as far as Monsters of the Week go, the poltergeist-type creature or whatever was following Lauren around is uh, kind of ill-defined psychic force of sorts. There's no real resolution with it, definitively. Um, I guess the best way to put it is kind of like a revenant, almost. Um, but, again, not really clearly defined, and not... It doesn't really... Well, it gets resolved in that the people are punished for what they did, but... Eh. I didn't think it was a particularly strong episode. So, anyway... But so that's all that for this week's episode. Uh, next time, we'll meet up and uh, we'll, we'll talk about Ghost in the Machine. All right, folks. Good night.